वेलकम टू कोर्स ऑन वेल साइड एडवांस वेल साइड डिजाइन सो कंटिन्यूंग विद माय अर्लियर डिस्कशन आई विल टेक यू थ्रू द मॉडल चेकिंग टेक्निक्स फॉर डिजाइन वेरिफिकेशन इन टूडेज लेक्चर सो इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड दैट हियर वी इफ यू वांट टू वेरीफाई वेल साइड सर्किट देन वी नीड टू थिंग्स वन इज द सिस्टम मॉडल that we define as a transition system and we discuss that transition system is uh, defined as set of states transition function and label on every state that we obtain by converting the the uh, finite state machine to the kripke case structure in kripke case structure we uh, transform the label from the edges in tra uh, state transition diagram to the nodes and the other thing that we need is uh, the formula or the proper property that we want to verify and property is encoded in terms of temporal language and that is uh, referred as temporal logic so the this is defined as as formula in, in temporal language and we discuss that there can be you can express in linear temporal logic or you can represent in the computation tree temporal logic so ltl or or ctl i'll take you briefly through both of this and we will then we'll we'll discuss this so uh, and now here uh, we want to say we have model written as m formula as f and then here we say that uh, means in some state a model satisfies the the, the formula f it if it satisfies in that case, case here that property is all the time respected by your design if it is not in that case here it gives you counter example and that help you debugging the the system so means as i re referred that we can use the linear time uh, temporal logic and and then how formally we define a formula in linear temporal logic so that formula can be be defined as say tautology so that means your formula can be always true that can be be, be defined as say sorry the, this is negation of tautology so 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 this formula can be tautology or this can be negation of 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 tautology or we can write like this or this can be any any formula which is labeled on some particular edge so when we convert our finite state machine into kripke structure we transform our in, uh, input output from the edges to the nodes and then nodes are labeled with the variables which are true in that particular state so then all the, the these variables which are labeled on that particular state are formulas so now now here the, the so a formula can be li like here in some st state transition diagram if i say that this is my p and q are true here q and r are true here r is true in this particular state say this is state is s0 s1 s2 and now here i i can say the, the, the this is my my state transition state transition diagram Uh, they say this is initial state so now here in this this particular state p and q both of the variables are true so these are the the true formula for state as as zero here q and r both are true that means these are are true formula for state as one and r is, is uh, true formula for state as two negation of any formula is also uh, also a formula in ltl logic there can be be conjunction or there can be a disjunction of two formula so now now here you can say that that, that in there is one formula phi another formula psi so in that case here there can be say uh, phi conjunction psi and 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 there can be be phi disjunction psi or there can be a phi implication psi so now now here you you can can write in both of the i mean all, all these ways so these are the, the static formula that normally we use in boolean logic and i guess you understand the 
truth table of the these static formulas. But now, in order to capture the uh, dynamic behavior of the system, here we also define some temporal operators, and these temporal operators are x, f, z, u, w, and r. X tells us the 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 formula holds good in the next state. F tells you that formula hold good sometimes in the future future. The future may be next state, next to next state, next to next to next state and, uh, and, and like this. Global operator tells you that this formula holds good in all the states in a path. There is a until operator until operator says that form one formula holds good until another formula holds good. In the, the, the same, same way, um, there is a weaker version of the until that is called as weak until. So, that, that is defined as phi weak until phi that means, uh, so this is uh, I will discuss how why this is weak and, and why we need that. And then here there is another operator that is called as release operator. So, these are our six temporal operator x, f, g, u, w and r. So, let us say uh, this is a uh, computation, this is um, your Kripke structure or a variant of finite state machine and now here I unroll this in order to obtain a computation tree that uh, how the, the computation progresses. So, say p q this is the, the state s 0 that is the initial state and now, now uh, if I start from this state in that case here this can either go to this state or it can go to this state right. So, now here first time here this will be un, this will unroll like this. Now, when you come to this state in that case here either you can go to, to this state or you can go back to the same previous state. So, now, now here your computation tree can unroll like this. If you are in state R in that case here you can be only in state R. Now, in this way the, the, the you, you can generate the computation tree which is infinitely long. So, this infinite lo long tree and, the, and, and it is of infinite width. So, this keep on keep on, on, on growing. Now, here any path is starting from the, uh, the initial state or uh, any progression is defined as a path. So, this is this is one of the paths. So, and now here we, we define this is the path 1 and which is starting from from say state 1. Now, here there can be another path like here this one. So, that is the another path we define path 2 uh, and then here this sub superscript tells you that from means which is the initial state of this path. So, now his path is starting from state s 1 and, and this is the second path. Now, here this I can say the third path starting from state s 1. So, now, now we define multiple paths in this uh, computation tree. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier that, that here we model system as a, as a transition system and we de define a path in the, the, this model which is infinite sequence of states S 1 to S 1 to S 2 S 3 so and so forth. And so, a path is represented by, by pi and then here pi subscript S 1 tells you that all the paths are sta starting from, from state S 1. Now, uh, uh, the let us look at the semantics of, of LTL. So, now if there is a model M that is a transition system and path pi that is starting from S 1, S 1, S 2 and uh, the, the infinitely long path in M. When pi satisfied and phi's an LTL formula, then this formula is, is, is defined as like here tautology that can be, be in inverse of tautology. Uh, so, that means, here it is always false or it can be a label on, on some particular state. So, p and, and where, where p is member of labels on state s 1, this can be inverse of any formula phi. So, this holds good if phi does not hold good in that particular state and in a path. Pi can be the conjunction of, of two formulas phi 1 and phi 2. So, they, they, this holds good if and on, only if formula phi 1 holds good and formula phi 2 holds good or pi can be disjunction. So, that means here this ho, uh, pi holds good when phi 1 holds good or phi 2 holds good or they, there can be implication. So, that means this says that pi 1 implies phi 2. This means that if 
phi 2 holds go phi 2 will hold good in that path whenever phi 1 holds good. So, that means here we can reason about phi 2 only when phi 1 holds good otherwise we cannot reason about about phi 2 whether it holds good or not. The temporal formula here I can is, is, is defined as phi satisfies x of phi if and only if in the very next state formula phi uh, holds good. G is the, the hold good if and only if in that path everywhere phi holds good for i greater than or equal to 1. Future somewhere there exists at least one state where in the formula holds good in that particular path pi of defined as phi until phi psi if and only if for any value i, I greater than 1 if phi i of holds good uh, means uh, psi holds good in phi pi i and for all value of j. So, that, that means here after particular state. So, means this tells us that in the state progression this phi phi holds good until psi hold good. So, until this point here when whenever whenever you will get psi un, until that point phi should hold good after that psi may hold good or, 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 or may not hold good. So, this is phi until psi this is a strong relationship this says that phi should hold good until psi holds good and psi should hold good at least once in that, that particular path. The w is the weaker version of that and that says that if strong until holds good weak until also holds good. So, that means here uh, if you have this phi 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 psi then here phi weak until psi holds good or if so here psi should hold good or if phi always hold good and psi never occur in that case also here phi hold good uh, this phi weak until psi hold good. So, that means here phi 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 infinitely long phi this is also valid formula for phi weak until psi. So, now, now here you can say that phi weak until psi is superset of phi until psi and in the same way here you can say that uh, there, there is another formula which says that phi releases psi. So, that means here until the, the psi hold good. So, that means psi should hold good until phi appears. So, in the, the weak until uh, no, sorry in until and release there is a relationship that in until uh, at you, you need to have phi 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 and psi whereas in so the, the and in the release operator you must have phi 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 and at least in one one state you you must have have phi and psi hold good together whereas that is not requirement in in, in the until op operator so they, they these are the various operators we use to model the, the system or to define the property of the system. Keep in mind that here your implementation is modeled by a transition system and specification is written in LTL formula. Now, we will we'll take a, so these are, are some of the depiction of these formulas like here x of f. So, like here f holds good in the very next state here it is false and here it become true f u g is that f holds good until g appears f of g is the, the future operator. So, that means here g holds good sometimes in the future this may, may be, be after 2 states after 3 states or after 5 states g of f is f holds good everywhere f releases g is that here this f should hold good until you, you means it is released by g. So, now here in this state f and g both both hold good. So, now, here let us say in, in, in this unrolled or computation tree let us argue about this formula whether this formula hold good or not. So, now S 0 is p and q. So, now, now here whether it holds good in the, the, the very first state that is S 0 
this holds good because p is p is true. So, p holds good q is true. So, that means, q holds good and then their their and operation also holds good. So, now here this formula holds good as 0 is negation of r. So, that means, here r does not hold good hence here negation of r holds good. So, this formula is true as 0 satisfies x of r that means, here in the, the very next state r should hold good. So, very next state from the S 0 state is either this q r state or r state in both of the cases r holds good hence here you can say that this formula holds good. Now, if you look at x of q and r. So, here in this state q and r holds good whereas, in this state q and r does not hold good hence means this if this does not hold good in, in both of the next states your this formula does not hold good. So, the this formula does not hold like here we can say s 0 satisfies g of negation of p and r. So, p and r so means both should should satisfy in the the path starting from s 0. So, now here in this p and r is does not satisfy here it does not satisfy here it does not satisfy. So, in this path nowhere this satisfies hence this formula is satisfied. So, now now this way way here we can can write the some of the formulas. So, now again here we we have several operators in this we we have means your conjunction disjunction negation and implication as a static operator and x f g u w and r as temporal operators. So, now, now here do we need all these operators like here if you want to define a system in that case here do we need negation conjunction disjunction all three operators no we do not need do not need these operators and we know that there is a uh, de Morgan's theorem and then here de Morgan's theorem can be, be defined like this one. Uh, all of I guess all of you know that. So, I do not need to discuss this. So, now, now here this can give the give you the equivalence bit between different op operators. This says that out of these three operators if we have two operators uh, either negation and conjunction or negation or di and disjunction in that case here th these are, are uh, sufficient to is, uh, specify any of the system. Now, there is a an equivalence re relationship between temporal operators like here we can say some of the these, these operators are defined as like here you say g of phi is equivalent to negation of g of phi is equivalent to f of negation of phi. What this says is that g of phi negation of that. So, that means here when g of phi is satisfied when here all along the path you have phi 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 hold good. When this formula fails, this formula fails if any of the, the states has negation of phi. So, if I have negation of phi here in that case the, the negation of g of phi hold good right. So, now, now this is the trace of negation of phi. Now, in this what I can say is that somewhere in the future at least in one of the states negation of phi hold good. So, that means here I can write this formula as f of negation of phi. So, that gives you the, the logical equivalence of negation of g of phi is equivalent to f of negation of phi. This way you, you means uh, uh, you can write this other way around as negation of f of phi as g of negation of phi in the same way x of phi. So, now, now in this state is, is you have phi next state you have phi. So, say, say in the, the current state you may have anything, but phi or, or, or negation of phi, but in the next state if you have phi in that case your, your, your formula x phi holds good. Whereas, if you say, say that, that, that this formula is, is, is does not hold good or does not satisfy in that case here your trace must be here you may have negation of phi and the next state must be negation of phi. This is equivalent to x of negation of phi because here in the ne next state negation of phi holds good. So, this way we can write equivalence in the same way you can work out there is a, a an 
equivalence relationship between u and r op op operator. So, means negation of phi until psi is equal to negation of, of phi until negation of psi. This, this uh, relationship is like De Morgan's theorem and or, or other, other way around you can al also write it. In the same way here you can write f of phi as is equivalent to tautology until phi. Tautology means here no restriction always holds good right. So, that means here without any restriction uh, in some state here phi holds good. So, that means here you have negation of phi, negation of phi, negation of phi and in some state phi hold good. So, this is equivalent to what? This is equivalent to f of phi because somewhere in the future your phi holds good. So, this way, way you, you can, can write like this. In the same way here global operator you can write g of phi is equivalent to negation of tautology restrict uh, religious phi. So, negation of, of tautology and as I explained you earlier that you are weaker until is superset of until. So, that means here if I add something in uh, so now, now your phi until psi is defined as phi 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 and somewhere psi right. Weak until can be either this one or phi 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 everywhere phi right. So, if this is there in that case here this is equivalent to weak until otherwise I have to have somewhere where, where psi should hold good. So, this I can also write as in order to capture this one I can also write as the, the, this as f of psi, f of psi means here psi hold good somewhere in the future. So, your weak uh, your strong until is equivalent to weak until and f of psi that gives you exactly this thing. So, so this way you can have equivalence between the weak until and, and strong until. So, now here in the, this way you can, can define the, the equivalence between these operators. Now, here uh, if you, you want to, to see which are the essential sets in that case here out of these six operators you can say I, I need either u or x or r or x or w or, or and x. So, now here either set is, is ok. So, now, now here you need two operators from the temporal logic and two uh, operators from the static logic. And so, now, now here either from static you, you need to have either this set or you need this set both, both of the sets are ok or and from the temporal you need to have u x this one or this one. So, now, now here you can pick any any of, of these two and any of these three. So, uh, and that can define you the complete complete set. So, now, now here the question is what we can do with this, how we can write or how we can specify property of the system. Let us take a simple example, this simple the, the, this example tells you the mutual exclusion or arbiter that gives you access to the common resource. What we want from that? There are couple of things that, that we, we need from the, the system uh, and those are defined as like here if one master want to, to get access on to the common resource in that case here it should be allowed to get, a, get access. Two masters cannot get access to the common resource. right? So, uh, and now here it should not be, be blocking. So, that means here like whenever somebody wants to, to access sometimes in the future it should give access to the common resource and it should not allow the strict sequencing that means here it should not I mean say give you the say round robin policy or uh, something like that. So, that first gives the, the access to the master 1, then master 2, master 3, master 4. So, here you have two masters say m 1 and m 2 and say, say they want to, to get access to the common resource and this common resource may, may, may be the bus. 
So, now here this master can, can be in any of the, the, the state, one state may be here it may request, I say that is trying state that is it is trying to get access uh, and then here once it, 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 it gets the, the, the your request is registered, you get access to the common resource and you are allowed to transfer your data to on the common bus and that state here we say as critical state. So, now, now, now here you, you are in the critical state and, and you, you have access to the, the, the system say that is state C. And now here many times your master may not want to, to a, a have the access to the common resource. So, uh, then you can say that it is not trying for anything it is it is in the idle state idle state say I, I say referred as n. Now, what are the important properties we are interested in? One of the properties that that is defined as safety property and safety property says that only one process in the critical only one process should be in the critical section. So, that means here more than one process should not access to the common resource. Another property is defined as liveness and liveness says that whenever any process request to enter in, in the critical section, it will eventually be permitted. So, that means, it is not necessary that in very next state it should be permitted, but it should be permitted somewhere in the future. And third property is non-blocking property we are interested in and this says that a process can always request to enter in the critical section. Once it is it gets access to the critical section, it should not be, be disallowed for that. It can always make any request at any point in time. And fourth property that is very important is no strict sequencing you may uh, means in some of the protocol uh, you may use round robin and then this property is, is violated, but ideally you, you may want that here there should not be strict sequencing. So, that means here process need not to enter in a strict sequence that here first process p 1 then p 2, p 2, p 3, p 4 something like that it should not happen like that. Okay. So, now here we, we design a mutual exclusion system and that system will work like this. So, let us work out it, it a little bit. So, say initially both of the, the resources are or masters are not requesting for any resource. So, they, they are in a state wherein in n 1 and n 2 n 1 n 1 says that process p 1 does not request process p and n 2 says process p 2 does not request. Now, so say this, this, this state is S 0. Now, when you, you will get request from master uh, M 1, then it will go to, to state M 2 and now sorry uh, master, master 1 or process P 1, then it should go to the, the another state and in the, the, that state say P 1 is in trying and N 2 is not trying. right? So, this is in the, the trying state that means, it, it raised the request. After that, what will happen? Now, in this either your T 1 uh, or, or process P 1 will get access. So, if it gets access in that case here, it will go to state C 1 and T 2 is uh, uh, means process P 2 is not trying or P, uh, process P 2 may, may also start to try. So, now here it will start to try and then here it will go to state T 1 and T 2. So, let us say come back to, to, to process P 1 which gets the, the, the access. So, this was S 1, this is S 2. Now, once it completes here it, get, it goes back to the initial state. Right. Now, now here if or from this state if T 2 start to T 2 again raises the, the, the request. So, far there was no request. So, in that case here it will go to state C 1 and T 2 come back to the, the previous state T 1 T 2, when it is in T 1 T 2, in that case here either uh, it will give access to C 1 means process P 1 or it will give access to the process P 2. So, say it gives access to the process P 1. So, this will work like this or it gives the, the, the access to the, the, the process P 2. So, in that case here this will give you, you T 1 C 2. Right. 
now if it goes to 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 c1 t2 in that case or or it goes to to t1 c2 in that case, case here once it completes t2 completes here it comes back to the state t1 n2 because now now here uh, process second is not not requesting for anything so now here like this you will also get get, get the similar kind, kind of state graph this side. So, now here if you look at this you will get a state transition diagram like this which gives you the, the implementation of an arbiter or, or mutual exclusion. I hope this is clear to you by this time. Now, let us see how I can encode these properties and for this one and check whether this uh, implementation is correct or not. So, this is implementation and this is crib k structure. So, crib k structure tells you that here these variables t 1 and n 2 are true in this state, here n 1 and n 2 are, 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 are true in this state and in this we have 6 different variables t 1, t 2, n 1, n 2, c 1, c 2. Right? Now, here let us look at the properties. So, first property was the safety property and safety property says that only one process uh, should be in the critical section. How I write that? So, that means in every state in, in, in this diagram I have to say that only one process should be in the critical section. So, that means here either C 1 should hold good in uh, any of the state or C 2 should hold good both should not hold good. right? So, means that how I can, can define. I can define that globally C 1 and, and C 2 both should not hold good. So, that means here C 1, C 2 should not hold good that means here the negation of this should hold good all the time globally. So, I can write uh, this property like this. Second property is liveness property which says that whenever any process request to enter into the critical section, it will eventually be permitted. So, that means here whenever a process wants to enter. So, that means whenever it is trying in that case here somewhere in the future it should get access. So, that means here now whenever some process say T 1 is trying. So, in that case after several cycles, I do not know how many cycles, but after several cycle it sh should get access. So, that means here it should go in the critical x section or it can get access to the, the common resource. So, now here this should hold good and this should hold good globally. This is for process P 1, this should also hold good for process P 2. So, that means here T 2 implies f of C 2. So, now here the, this encodes liveness property. Third property is non-blocking property. So, non-blocking property says that for every state satisfying n 1, there is a successor state t 1. So, that means here it should not be at least in, in, in some of the paths the, the, the next state. So, should be uh, after n 1 it should be t 1. Right. But now here in this we cannot rep cannot select uh, define property for selective paths. Here this property says that here this need not to hold good all the time, this should hold good selectively. So, in that case here we, we have to, we cannot ex express that and I will come back to this point and will will tell you that this, this ca can be expressed in computation tree logics, computation tree te uh, temporal logic CTL and it, this this is not expressible in in ltl the another uh, property is no strict sequencing so no strict sequencing says that you cannot strict sequence a strict sequence that means strict sequence tells you that you have to go in this way first c1 goes in the critical section then c2 then then again c1 then c2 then c1 c2 uh, it has to follow the strict sequence and what we want is that it should not have strict sequence. So, that means here this may follow the, the sequence as well, but at least there must be one path in which it should go, go like C 1, C 1, C 1, C 2, C 1, C 1 something like that. So, that, that means we have to now, now here how I can write this property. 
we can write this property as a negation of the, the, the property because here uh, again we cannot write property for the selective formula, but in this particular case negation can help us that we if we say that there is at least one path in which the strict sequencing that is C 1, C 2, C 1, C 2 does not hold good that means here it does not follow strict sequencing in all the time. So, in this case we are we can write this property as a negation of the property and that says that the that here your C 1 either should uh, should hold good all the time and so that means here C 1 implies C 1 we can tell so that means here either C, C 1 continues or it should go to, to negation of C 1 and then here from negation of C 1 it goes to C 2 and then come back to C 1. So, now, now here this, this says that, that here strict sequencing is not, not needed and if this property fails that means here strict sequencing passes, no strict sequencing passes. So, this way we can write. Now, in the, the state transition diagram if we look at this property. So, if you go back to the, the, the state transition diagram here, you can say that, that nowhere in this C 1 and C 1 both are true. So, if this is false, so that means here negation of this, this is true. So, that means here the, the first property holds good. Second property tells you that what it says that you, you have to, to have T 1 F C 1 and this holds good globally. So, that means here after T 1 somewhere in the future you should get C 1 right. Now, here if in this in this transition diagram if you look at a path S 0, S 1, S 3, S 7 your what you are getting here N 1, N 2 here you will get T 1. So, so now, now here T 1 is true. Now, you can reason about F C 1 once T 1 holds good. So, T 1 holds good here. Now, after that what we want that somewhere in the future it should C 1 should hold good. So, that means from T 1 if I look at this one T 1 here you will get C 1. So, in this path this holds good, but if you look at this path S 0, S 1, S 3, S 7, S 1, S 2, S S 3, S 7, S 1, S 3, S 7. So, the, the path that is S 0, S 1, S 3, S 7, S 1, S 3, S 7 and so on and so forth. In this path here you have T 1, T 1, T 1, again T 1, T 1, T 1, T 1 and so you will never get C 1. So, that means this path violates this property. So, what it says that your second property which is liveness property fails. So, that means and what liveness property says that whenever any process request to enter into the critical se section it will eventually be, be permitted and here it means the, this counter example that we have discovered as 0 S 1, S 3, S 7, S 1, S 3, S 7. So, in if it follows this computation path, it would not permit T 1 or, or the process 1 to enter into the critical section. Hence, there is a design bug and it captures the de design bug. I will come back and, and, and tell you how we can look at uh, means how we can uh, debug that design bug non blocking. So, so the counter example tells you that, that here which path violates this property. Now, third property uh, is not any way not encoded in LTL then go back to the, the fourth, fourth property and then here you will find out find in the computation path you, you can do this on your own that this is always this property is always respected. So, that means here negation of this property holds good. So, now here how I, I, I can, can set this process right. If you look at this where is the source of error? Source of error lies here at S 3. 
when you come to a state the S 3, wherein T 1 and T 2 both are true, now you lose track through which path you came from S 0, S 1, S 3 or you came from S 0, S 5, S 3 and now here this can go to this state or this can go to this state. So, now here you do not have memory. Otherwise, if you if you remember that if you come through this path, then here you would not allow it to go go here, you can, can, can allow it to go here. So, now means in order to debug it or in order to, to fix this bug, say uh, means for debug we, we get to know that this is the source of bug and in order to fix this bug here, now what is the solution, what is the remedy? Remedy is that here you split this state in two states so that you can remember that whether you came through this path or, or you came through this path. And so, now here that will fix your, your, your problem. So, now, now here by splitting the, the this state in, in state S 3 and S 9, both have T 1 and T 2 variable high or, or a true. So, in that, but here now I, I remember if it came through this path in that case here this should go, go here if it came through this path it should go go over here and now, now here there is no confusion and now if if you look at it you you won't find such a such a path and hence here oh, both all these three properties will pass and so so now, now here this way you can specify property and then you can verify those properties on given model and so now, now here that, that that model is generated from the implementation. So, uh, this transition implementation is describes a transi transition system or finite state machine or Kripke case structure and your specifications are written in terms of LTL formulas. And as we know that here LT formulas are evaluated on paths. So, that means here uh, and, and that is why this is linear because in, on a path always with the clock tick here you will linearly move to the next state, next to next state, next to next state always. State of the, the system satisfies uh, LTL formula if all the paths on a given state satisfies the formula. So, that means from one state if n number of paths are originating in that case here that state satisfies formula only when all paths originating from that state satisfies that formula. Now, here LTL implicitly quantifies over the, the, the universally over the path. So, that means, here all the paths originating from the same state. And now, here, but some of the properties which asserts the existence of path. So, that means, those are defined for a selected set of path cannot be expressed in LTL that is the, the shortcoming of LTL. Sometimes like here as we, we have seen that no strict sequencing we can use negation and we can, uh, can define the property. So, negation can partly help us, but not all the time. So, for that here we need to go, go to the branching time temporal logic. So, if you look at the computation tree in that case from every state here now this branches out either it goes to this state or it goes to this state. So, now if we start to define formula based on the computation tree and or, or you can say the, the uh, with respect to a state in that ca case here we can select some of the paths. So, now, now here from this either it goes here or it goes here. So, now here we can select the paths and so now, now that, that, that formula uh, that is defined as computation tree uh, temporal logic CTL. So, now, now here a big difference between the, the LTL and CTL is that with every formula or, or, or temporal operator we need to specify one path modality whether this holds good on all the paths originating from a state or it, it holds good on selected paths. So, one path modality is, is defined as A that is for the, the representing the universal quantification. So, that means, it depend means defined for all the paths originating from one of the state or or we define E that that refer the existential quantifier that means, here uh, it says that this exists or this holds good at least for one of the paths. And so, now means we have to, to, to associate these path modalities 
with each and every temporal logic. So, now, now here your static formula remains same, but the temporal formula has association with the path modalities either universal or existential. So, now here if we say x operator I have that says that some formula holds good in the next state. So, now there can be several next states from one particular state. So, now here based on, on whether it, it should hold good in all the next states or it should hold good in one of the next at least one of the next states uh, we, we define the path modality. So, if it hold, it should hold good in all the next state in that case here we, we define this we associate A or if it should hold good on selected or at least one of the next state in that case here we define this as E of x. So, in this the same way here we can write we can define if, if some formula hold good sometimes in the future in any of the paths in that case here we, we define that as E of f or if it holds good in all the, the, the paths in that case here we define as A of f. So, now here means we can define this as tautology or sorry there, there, there must be negation here. So, this is negation of tautology or a, this can be a formula which is label on in particular state it can CTL formula can be negation of a formula, it can be conjunction disjunction implication, it can be a temporal operator x and that associated with, with path modality as A, it can be, be associated with path modality as E, then here there can be, be f. So, f or g, g is global and u. Generally, we do not define weak until or, or release operator for uh, CTL, but you can define that as well there is no, no such restriction. As we, we discussed earlier that here we can convert from one formula to another. So, that means here u to, to w or u to r or, or, or w to, to u or, or r to u. So, now here the, the, these formulas are, are defined in this way. So, these are static formula the, those static formulas are same whereas, the, the, the temporal formulas change a little bit. So, now here a of f a x of f. So, it says that, that, that here in all the next states f should hold good e x that means here it should hold good at least in, in one of the, the state. A g should say, say that, that here in all the paths starting from state s should uh, means f should hold good or if it is e g then here in one of the paths this should hold good. If, uh, if it is a f. So, that means here somewhere in the future the formula f should hold good in all the states in all the paths starting from s. Now, if it is e in that case here f should hold good at least in one of the paths in the future. A u is say that, that here f should hold good in all the paths until g holds good. So, now, now here this is uh, g hold good here g hold good here g hold good is E u is, is defined at that here f should hold good at least in one of the paths until g holds good. So, now here some of the things that we can are uh, examples are like this we can say like, like if there is a request there must be acknowledgement. So, now, now here uh, when there, there is a request here sometimes in the future may not be in the next cycle, but sometimes in the future there must be, be acknowledgement and this should hold good globally in, in in a, a arbiter or a message passing system in some protocol. So, or here uh, now, now we can define a, a process is enabled infinitely often on every computation path. So, that means here it can be enabled again and again and again. So, that we can define that here globally sometimes in the future a enable signal should hold good or, or should become true. Now, we can also so model deadlock. Deadlock says that sometimes in the future it will be stuck to or, or always it would be in, in same state. So, that means here that is deadlock. So, the, this can model the deadlock. They you can mean say, say if you want to define that like in a processor you can or, or in any of the sequential circuit you can always press reset and then it should come back to reset irrespective of in which state it was. So, now, now here that you can define that globally 
from every state there exist one one path that can take you to the restart state. So, that is the restart or reset state. Like you can also define some formula like here if a elevator is traveling upward uh, in that case here it should keep uh, and some. So, if it, uh, an elevator is in, uh, in flow at floor 2 and button for floor 5 is pressed it is going upward in that case here it should keep on going upward until floor fifth before changing the changing the direction of the elevator or here if you want to so now now here the universally globally this should happen that if it is in the floor 2 and direction is up and button for floor 5 is pressed in that case here it should always keep direction up until it reaches to floor 5 a eleva elevator can remain in idle state in the on the third floor with its door closed. So, now that you can say that if it is on the, the, the floor 3 if it and it is idle and door is closed in that case here this implies that it should continue to, to in, in the, the this state. So, now here uh, one of the property that, that we want we were not able to, to encode in LTL now, how we can, can encode that. So, other properties you can also define in, in, in CTL like here well, as I said that LTL properties are implicitly using universal quantification. So, now, now for the first safety property you can have universal quantification for the liveness again here you can use the universal quantification because this should happen all the time non blocking property we were not able to define. So, that means here uh, this was related to one path what it says is that for every state satisfying n 1 there should be at least one successor that can satisfy C 1. So, that means here we were supposed to, to write like this that if it is in, in state n 1 there exists at least one path where in the next state is T 1 and this should hold good globally in all the states. So, now here why we were not able to, to specify this in the uh, in LTL because here we need existential quantifier and global quantifier. If you are needing only existential in that case here your uh, negation can help you, but now here you you are you want to select a path from a set of paths. So, now, now, now here that is why we you cannot cannot specify. In the same way here the no strict sequencing property you can also define by by converting the, the this into the, the existential quantifier because earlier the, the, this was defined as negation of the property. Okay, so, now, now here if, if you look at this all these properties will say will pass. Again here uh, there, there are various operators you can define the equivalence between these two these operators and finally, here you need a set of three operators in among the temporal operators and negation and conjunction or negation and disjunction as temporal operators. So, now, now here you need five operators to express any property and now here. So, the, this theorem says that a set of temporal connectives in CTL is adequate if and only if it contains at least one of A x and, and or A x and E x means from a x or E x or at least one from E c A f A u and and E u. So, now, now, now here you, you need to have three operators A x or E x, E g or A f or A u and E u. So, now if you want to check the, 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 the C T L formula, C T L checking C T L formula is more straightforward because the you it is related to state not related to path I means checking for temporal formula is, is, is more difficult. And what we do is we use the, the, the labeling concept. So, that means here we start in the reverse way we start from a point wherein the formula holds good and then here we go back and try to, to, to reach to the, the initial state. So, now we label those states which are old wherein the current formula is satis satisfied and then we go back if, if the, the previous state of that state satisfies that formula and this way we do the backward reachability and we if we happen to reach to the 
initial state in that case we can say that that property is all the, the time respected. So, now here for and and nor what we need to do is here if both of the, the formulas are true at a node then here resulting and formula is true and so now, now, now here say in this state say you have this state. So, here a formula phi holds good and that is phi say phi and psi. Now, now if this holds good in that case here I label the, the, the this formula say capital phi and now, now here because this holds good in that case here this would hold good in the, the previous state. So, uh, everywhere, we, but here uh, only we need to consider. So, and and note are, are pretty straightforward, but here now we need to consider E uh, x of and E u and E g of uh, formula. So, now here E x again here for E x it is it is straightforward. Now, if x f holds good in some state in that case here E x holds good in the, the previous state. So, now, now here input is your, your Kripke structure, output is, is labeled is state transition diagram or state or labeled a Kripke structure wherein you label E x of f. So, now here for each state s of k add label E x of f if f is labeled at the successor of s. So, now here that is what I, I, I told you E u of g, E u of g can be, be referred as now here we look at some state if these are the, 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 the state if g is labeled here in that ca ca case here I lab labeled here f f until g in this state. Now, this is universal. So, now here you, you look at the previous state in this state if the, the previous state is labeled as f here f then here I can also label this this as f until g and because here this is existential the, the, this means we need to check only in, in one path. So, in one of the successor. So, now, now here the if, if you look at the previous one the, the next state is, is labeled as E f u z and then here uh, in earlier state also has f in that case here you can also label this as f until c. This way you, you keep on going. So, now here you, you need not to unroll your finite state machine or uh, in other word you do not need to create complete computation tree which is infinite long and now, now here this way you keep on, on, on going back the moment you, you reach to the initial state and initial state is labeled with that particular formula you can say that formula holds good all the time. So, now, now here they we can dramatically reduce the complexity of verification of these, these formulas. Now, so the this algorithm does the same thing it says that assume the formula f and g have been verified. So, now here E f of g is true at the node if there is a path from the, the node to g labeled node and every node along with the partial path f is labeled, but g is not. So, now here the, the formula holds good wherein g holds good and now you have to check where, whether g holds good and, and f is there just before that. So, a no, node satisfies E f u g if g is labeled at that node or f is la labeled but not g is labeled at the node and its successor is either labeled as g or, or f until g. So, this way here you can verify this. So, now here at the end I can summarize this that you model your, your uh, implementation as a transition system. You write down the properties using either CTL formula or LTL formula say that that formula is f and then here you need to, to check whether your formula satisfies in, in all the paths or, or in the, the state in which way it is it is referred if it is it satisfies in that case here in, in all the cases that property is respected if it fails then it will give you the uh, counter example and counter example will help you in fixing the bug. So, with this I summarize the verification portion of uh, this set of lectures on advanced VLSI design.
గుడ్ డే